Hey, I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast where we help you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. Okay, Jam, are you ready to learn what you're going to learn about today? Yes, I'm very ready to learn about what I'm going <laughs> to learn about what I'm going to learn about today. <laughs> um, you're going to learn about baking soda. Wait, okay. hang on. Do you bake ever? Sometimes, but it's probably my least favorite part of cooking. Like, Oh, wow. That the, is unrelatable to me. I, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> the least favorite category of cooking. I don't... Like you think you're too good for baking and right, you're better right. than everyone yeah. who bakes. Right, well, right. we it's know not that you that. feel that way. No, I don't feel that way. I feel like a lot less confident in that area. Completely. Oh, okay, okay. So it's like I just don't go there very much. Well, I'll help you get more confident in that area today because we're going to talk about baking soda. Okay. That's the orange box one. Uh-huh. The orange, orange box. That always makes me think of, of Rosie the Riveter. Oh, yeah. I was Rosie I the always Riveter think of that. for Halloween one time. Oh, nice. Um, That actually plays nicely into... A little thing I'm going to tell you later, but it's fine. So we're going to learn about baking soda in the orange box with the Rosie the Riveter arm. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about baking powder. Okay. That's the one that comes in the little circle can usually that's resealable mm -hmm. on the top. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about what the heck is the difference between them. Nice. Okay, good. That's very, very good. Yeah. Can maybe prevent a horrible baking mistake in my future. <laughs> or it'll just help you be like, oh, I know what this does and this does when these two things happen. Well, you know, sometimes one or two of those things are called for in a non-baking dish. Like I think I was making a sauce that called for one at one point. Mm -hmm. So it's still applicable even if I don't bake. That's true. Still help me. All right. So, but before we do that, before I tell you about those things and we talk about the difference and all that, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I want to hear about how your week was. Dude, it was all right. It was not my favorite week in the world. Oh, no. Really? Why? Well, there was this... I feel like every week I've been talking about how I'm um, trying to apply for jobs and stuff like that. So it was a super sweet job that a friend of ours had told me about and got all my stuff in order, got everything looking awesome um, with a lot of help and went to submit all of it. This was to a uh, one of the universities in our town. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was very suddenly closed already. It was like had not been open for very many days. No. Yeah. That's so, so sad. But I still had the thing, like, the page up or whatever. Like, I still had, like, the page. I had the job in my cart or whatever. Right. But when I actually hit, tried to hit submit, it said error. Or, and I was like, eh, this no. is not available anymore. So that was a huge bummer. And I was like... That's so sad. Yeah, a lot of my week last week was built around, like, getting all that stuff ready leading yeah. up to that. And then it was just a total anticlimactic ending to it. So, university, um, that one that's in our town, if you're listening, uh, hire me. I'm still here. I thought you were going to say, I'm mad at you. That's what I would have said. University, I'm mad at you. <laughs> well, I think this university, if they're listening, is in the position to, they've got all the power. So That's true. I could be mad or I could still be just willing to work for them, which <laughs> I think I'm the second one, if we're both honest. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. Not worth it to be mad, <laughs> so but that was, just sad. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my week. Um, Dang, that's sad. I'm sorry. Part. That's all right. I'm over it now. I mean, sort of. You're if like, they, I'm over it. I don't, I'm not mad. <laughs> well, I still did the, I found out like who I think the supervisor is and I sent them my stuff. So, oh, nice. So I, I, there's still a chance. It's not, it could be like a to be continued kind of thing. Right. Which would be pretty sweet, but I don't know. Well, um, my week was not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I had the opposite of your not working issue uh -huh. where I worked constantly uh -huh, uh -huh. but there's something that's making me very happy right now and mm -hmm. i'm gonna tell you what it is okay it's something in the air you can feel it coming it's the best time of the year <laughs> it's the most wonderful time <laughs> yes exactly so i christmas love no oh this is not right jam it's not christmas oh okay every year around this time a podcast that i love called spooked comes out Ooh. and this is the this is what harkens the coming of my favorite six months of the year uh -huh. my favorite half of the year uh -huh. so first comes spooked it's 13 weeks before halloween it's a spooky episode that comes mm. out once a week until halloween got it for 13 weeks after spooked comes out this mm -hmm. is when i know everything exciting is about to happen the weather starts getting cooler mm -hmm. hockey season starts uh -huh. that's like my favorite uh-huh after hockey season starts, then Halloween comes. I love Halloween. I yeah. didn't used to care about Halloween, but my friend in college got me really into it. Uh -huh. 
I started to realize how fun it was to dress up like Rosie the Riveter or Mario or, yeah. um, you know, a golden snitch, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And so Halloween is coming. And then after Halloween, it's going to get even colder. And I can wear all my cute sweaters and comfy clothes. And I love that season. Dude, I like that too. I'm I'm not going to be wearing as many cute sweaters and stuff like that. But I do <laughs> like the changing of the seasons. I like whenever just things change. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, I can wear something different. Or just starts looking different outside. I, I'm mm-hmm, with you. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about well, that. Well, I think you just like when things change in general, like then you're happy about summer coming back. But I'm not. We'll get to that. Oh, wait, I'm not happy about summer coming back. Oh, you're not? Oh, okay. Summer's like probably the least favorite of mine. Yeah, I hate all of that. Yeah. Well, so that's what I was about to say. Uh-huh. After it gets cold, then it's Thanksgiving with your family, and then uh-huh. it stays cold, and then it's Christmas, yep. which I do love, and then it still stays cold for several more months, and then it's my birthday, and then it's spring break, and then I hate everything after that. Yeah. I mean, it's exciting if the Dallas Stars get into the playoffs, but that's not a guarantee and it's just getting hotter and the end is just coming and all that's sad. So basically there's a big chunk of the year that we're just kind of waiting for it to be over. That's what I do from oh. roughly April until now ish. Now ish. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I'm really happy because I can feel that the anticipation of autumn coming is it's tingling all around me. I can nice. feel it. It's very close. Yeah. I think I can feel it too. Well, it won't be too long before your wife just starts lighting fall scented candles all over the house. She actually has already started doing that. Has so she? I ah, should have I should have known. That's how you could feel it too. <laughs> okay. Baking so, soda, baking, baking powder. Soda. Baking powder. Do you know what the purpose of both of those things are in baking? Why do people put those in? If you watch the Great British Bake Off, you should know. I have never watched that. Okay. So I do not. <laughs> <laughs> that's a mistake, am I right? Um, Population. I'm trying to think if I have any guesses at all. When am I use baking soda? Baking soda is the volcano one. Yes, but what does it do in baking? That's a that's good. We're gonna get to that. You're jumping ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to. It's like the only th- association that, that comes to mind. Okay, then I'll just cut you loose and let okay. you know. All right. So it is in the volcano. We'll uh-huh. definitely do that. What they do in cookies and cakes and all that uh-huh. is they're a rising agent they are what causes the both cakes to rise both of them are whoa they okay. cause the cakes to rise Didn't and get fluffy cakes and bakes to get fluffy and uh-huh. delicious okay okay not i guess the other flavors make them delicious but that's what they do uh-huh. the reason it causes them to rise uh-huh. is it's putting air bubbles into the batter interesting are we gonna get into a little bit of how on that because i have like a lot of questions now. We definitely are. Okay, I'm good. glad you have a lot of questions. That's good. Yeah. Um. So we're going to get into that. But uh-huh. for right now, think about your volcano reaction. Okay. So it's baking soda mm-hmm. and vinegar. And what happens? It reacts and then it expands. Or mm-hmm. I guess it's a lot of bubbles too. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it just suddenly overflows whatever it's in no matter what. Right. So that is a reaction that's happening. So right now we're not going to understand the difference yet. I'm just going to tell you the bare minimum of how rising agents work. And then we're just going to talk about the difference. Okay. Okay. So there's a reaction that's happening when you mix baking soda with acid. Okay. Okay. That reaction evolves gas and puts all the bubbles in. Okay. Okay. So it happens pretty quickly when you do the volcano reaction because yeah. there's usually a lot of it. Right. And, so right, right. It, and it's usually in a small container. That's why a volcano's out. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of it and it goes poof, and mm-hmm. comes out very quickly. That is an acid base reaction. Okay. So do you know much about acids and bases? I, I do from my time, only as they apply to pools because I work at a pool store and I tested water. It's like the closest it ever got to like actually doing the chemistry. So mm. test waters, um, like pH and stuff like that. Okay. So. Well, to just, I mean, a very basic definition mm-hmm. is, I am I mean, really, it's, I guess, a thorough, it's just one definition, is uh-huh. something that gives up a hydrogen plus cation. So that is basically, you know, hydrogen on the periodic table. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hydrogen has one electron. Yes. If you... Take a, that one electron away from the hydrogen atom. That's uh-huh. called a proton. It's technically a cation, uh-huh. but it's just referred to the H plus. When you lose an electron, you're positive. Mm-hmm. My cousin told me this joke to remember that, <laughs> that you say, 
And and Adam ran into a bar and said, I think I lost an electron. And the bartender says, are you positive? <laughs> that's how you remember. <laughs> um, so it's a, just basically a hydrogen atom that's lost its one electron, so it's positive and leaves a proton, is what we call it. Okay. So an acid is something that can give up that proton. Okay. And a base is something that can take that proton. Oh, interesting. So it's usually represented in um, science as basically an H plus moving from one molecule to another molecule. Wait, it can give up. Okay, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. So hydrogen wants to have one electron. Hydrogen naturally has one electron. Uh Uh-huh. And I'm not totally understanding the definition yet, only because I I think in my head acids are, I don't really have an understanding of what a base is. So mm-hmm. much in my like everyday that's life. That's very normal, yeah. But acids, I'm like, oh, dude, that's stuff like that burns, or it's like, mm-hmm. like kind of intense, or things mm-hmm. are like a little bit acidic, where it's like you can almost kind of feel it or taste it, depending on the food mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and so that's like where the word acid has mostly been applied in my life, right? And pool chemicals. Yes. So probably the rest of the world wouldn't have that pool chemical experience, but. Yeah. A lot of times, actually, bases are also that caustic burn uh-huh. can hurt you. So uh-huh. try to take what you know about acids or acidity and put it away. Okay. Um, just don't think about it now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And think about this new science definition. Okay. So it's just a hydrogen atom mm-hmm. that's lost its electrons. Okay. Moving back and forth, kind of. Okay. The acid will send it over to the base. Mm-hmm. More accurately, the base will take it away from the acid. Okay. So does is that drive in with you? Can you say it back to me one more time? So an acid. So there's high in every a, in every acid. There's hydrogen. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, in the definition of acid and base that we're using, uh-huh. that yes, there are hydrogen atoms on the molecule that are willing to. Be okay. given up, yes. So not every, so not, don't, uh, I shouldn't make it that broad reaching. So in this scenario, the acid we're talking about that has hydrogen atoms mm-hmm. in the molecule, mm-hmm. um, acid has the, uh, it's, it's electron, that hydrogen has this electron taken away. No. Oh, no. Okay, so really what happens is mm-hmm. the base has an abundance of electrons. Okay, okay. So... A good way to think about it is those electrons come over Mm -hmm. and they nab the hydrogen without the electrons the hydrogen already has, those stay behind. So it just takes the, basically the proton of the hydrogen and leaves the electrons behind. Okay. Okay. So that's an H plus. It's, that's what it's called. Something that loses its electrons becomes positive. So. It's just a hydrogen that's lost one electron. Okay. So it takes a hydrogen without the electron, Mm -hmm. and that's what happens. Okay. (laughs) I don't know what I thought I was going to say, but that's it. (laughs) Okay. So it's just that H plus moving. The acid gives away the H plus, and the base takes the H plus. The acid gives away the hydrogen, Uh but keeps its electrons, and the base takes the hydrogen with none of it the original okay. electron okay sweet so so acid mm-hmm. electrons keeps the electrons yes base has the positive the proton takes the positive takes so the base has, takes the base starts out very negative and that's uh-huh. why it wants the positive from that uh-huh. Uh-huh. from that acid okay can you say that one more time okay. so a base Mm-hmm. It starts out pretty negative. Yes. And so it wants this positivity. Yes. And so it's like, give me the proton uh huh, or I'll be mad or whatever. So right. it takes the the proton from this hydrogen, mm-hmm. but leaving the electron. So it's taking just an H plus. Yes. And then the electrons are left behind, yes. which is an acid. The acid was what it starts out as. It already was an acid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everything you said was right. Uh It takes the protons. Uh It leaves... It takes the proton. It leaves the electrons behind on what used to be the acid. Okay. The new name of that is conjugate base. 
that doesn't really matter. Okay. But it starts out as an acid because it has that proton that's it's willing to lose. Okay. And the base is the negative one, mm-hmm. takes the proton, leaving behind the electrons and creating turning the acid from an acid into a conjugate base. Okay. That doesn't that last part doesn't matter a lot, but it seemed like you were getting caught up on that. So the okay. acid is what it starts as. Does okay. that make sense? Yes. You think you got it? I think so. You know what an acid and a base are now? Yes. Okay. Although, yeah, it feels a little bit not related yet to real life, but <laughs> yeah. hopefully that'll change. Well, hopefully it will change because when you add the vinegar and the baking soda together, now uh-huh. remember we were talking about baking soda. Yes. When you add those two things together, that reaction is happening. Okay. The vinegar has protons. Mm-hmm. That's what makes it acidic. That's what gives it that acidic flavor. Uh-huh. The base, that's the baking soda, is very negative, and it wants to take the protons from the from the vinegar. Uh-huh. And that reaction, as that's happening, it creates air bubbles. Okay. Now, this isn't very important unless you're just really interested mm-hmm. in chemistry, which hopefully you are from yeah. listening to this. Yeah. But just so you know what gas it is and how that all happens. Uh-huh. Why are you smiling? I was just thinking about how like they wouldn't have even clicked on this. It's like so <laughs> clear this is a chemistry podcast. Like whoever's listening would not well, have. I guess it's just like this isn't crucial, but this explains why it gives off yeah. gas, what gas it is in this case. So baking soda, mm-hmm. the formula of the atoms uh-huh. is one hydrogen, one carbon, and three oxygens. Okay. Okay, when it gets another proton, Mm -hmm. it becomes two hydrogens, one carbon, and three oxygens. Mm -hmm. It just takes that hydrogen. H goes from being HCO3 to H2CO3. Okay. So two hydrogens. Yeah. When you have that, it will break up into water and CO2. Do you know what CO2 is? Carbon dioxide. Yes. Okay, so h 2 CO3, if you write those out and move them around, they will rearrange to H2O and CO2. You have enough atoms of all of those to make that. Ah. And so that will naturally happen. After the baking soda gets a proton, it will break apart into H2O and CO2. Okay. CO2 is a gas. Yeah. Those are the little bubbles that you're seeing. Got it. Ah. And that's CO2 is carbonation. Yes. Okay. Well, we're not there yet. Dang That's f- another lesson for another time. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I was like, wait, I know where that is. Yes, that is in something else, and I have that on our list to talk about. Okay, so you're combining these two things: vinegar, honey, yes, and baking soda. Baking soda. And it reacts. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that happens is that it takes. I can't wait. The vinegar is one that's taking. The vinegar is the acid. Yeah. No. It's giving. The baking soda is one that's taking, mm-hmm. and it takes a hydrogen mm-hmm. from... Well, a proton, because uh, it doesn't proton. take... It takes a hydrogen without the electron, yeah, yeah. so that's key. But it does end up having an effect on the makeup of the leftover stuff. Because it's but yeah. still a hydrogen, yeah. Yeah, it takes a hydrogen without the electron, mm-hmm. and then that changes the... Um, one, while that's all happening, air or bubbles of gas mm-hmm. are created, which mm-hmm. is carbon dioxide, because... The main letters, which is one hydrogen, Mm -hmm. one carbon, Mm -hmm. and two oxygens. Three oxygens. Three oxygens. Because it has to give one oxygen to H2O and keep two oxygens behind for CO2. So baking soda starts out as one carbon, Mm -hmm. one hydrogen, Mm -hmm. and three oxygens. Yes. And then when the whole reaction is happening with the vinegar, Mm -hmm. it takes a hydrogen minus the electron. Yes. And then because of that, and things get reconfigured, mm-hmm. where, where the letters of the different elements that are there, mm-hmm. one of them becomes CO2, I mean, mm-hmm. which is the gas that starts bubbling yes. like crazy. Yep. The other one's just basically water. It is water. H2O. Yep. And then it's like, it's all going on all at once. Mm-hmm. But that's like... Yeah. And really, um, scientists know a lot, but it's hard to say. I don't know if they've looked into exactly how this happens. Uh-huh. I would assume... That before it breaks up, first it becomes 
H two CO three, and then it breaks up. Uh-huh. So I'm sure I could look into that and find out if that happens in that order, or if it if some other mechanism happens where immediately it forms the other two. But mm-hmm. it doesn't matter a ton. Okay, I it is my instinct that the H two CO three forms, and then the H two CO three breaks up very quickly into H two O and CO two. Okay. And we can put that on there so that uh, we can put that on there. We can put that on Instagram uh-huh. so that you guys can see and Twitter. I love my Twitter peeps, my mm-hmm. tweeps. You can see sort of how the H two CO three breaks into H two O and CO two. I think it'll be easier when you can see those letters spelled out. Yeah. So, and you don't really have to worry about the bonds breaking or how they rearrange unless you want to go into science class. You'll learn all about that. It doesn't matter a ton. All you need to know is that happens, and that's how gas is formed. Mm -hmm. Okay? Got it. So, if you... So, you got it. You know what happens with a vinegar reaction. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put that base into your baked goods Uh with something acidic, like, say, if you're making a lemon cake, Mm -hmm. lemon juice is acidic. It's got those protons going on. Yeah. So, you put baking soda and lemon juice and everything else in your batter and then you pop it in the oven that reaction is happening much slower or not much slower but it's less violent less intense because it's not as much stuff it's just a little bit of the baking soda a little bit of the lemon juice and they're not as close to each other or any of that which is kind of good because you want like Mm -hmm. a volcano of Of cake cake. in your oven so and as you add heat usually reactions happen faster so Mm -hmm. i would assume so what happens? You put all that batter in. It's probably a reaction to already starting to happen. You can usually see a little bit of bubbles in your batter before you put it in the oven, right? Interesting. Can you think of that? Can you think of seeing that? If you've made a cake from Actually, scratch. Yeah. I think I've just thought of it as like things settling, but mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah. I have one lemon cake that I make that there's a lot of rising agent and you can see that bubble, uh-huh. that bubble starts straight away. And that yeah. means that it's kind of on a timer. You got to get it in that oven quick because the reaction's already happening. Uh-huh. So... That's happening, but as it bakes and that moisture is leaving in everything, the the air bubbles leave little gaps Mm -hmm. in the batter. So that causes there to be little, those little air holes in your cake that make it light and fluffy. Nice. That's very interesting because I just trying to go off of just intuition as a Mm -hmm. layman, Mm -hmm. the idea of putting some powder into a batter Mm -hmm. would in my mind just make it thicker. Mm-hmm. Like, I would just think, like, this is just going to get thicker. It's just going to. That's what flour does. Right, right, right. That's probably why. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. It's like assuming all powders are going to perform like flour will. Right. But it just would be my assumption without understanding what's mm-hmm. going on. Even so, like, even if someone told me, like, over and over and over, like, this is gonna, what's going to happen. It's going to make it fluffier. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't just start making sense to me just because someone keeps saying that unless they explain it well and if there's no acid present and you just throw some baking soda in and you uh don't give it anything to react with it will do that it'll Uh leave a baking soda flavor Mm. and thicken up your batter and it'll be gross so does that flavor not is that flavor a lot less prominent when you actually do have something acidic yeah because the baking soda is gone it's become co2 and h2o wow which are basically flavorless one's gas and one's water yeah so now that's baking soda we've been talking about baking soda this whole time okay what do you think baking powder is is baking powder the opposite (laughs) like it would be acid you mean yeah is it acid no but that is i mean kind of that's like smart a smart thing that you're like i'm just gonna add powdered acid and then it'll be basic no it is already the acid and the base mixed together but because they're mixed together in the dry form, they are not able to react. They need a method to move around together and interact. I mean, there might be a very little. I don't know how that would happen. But usually reactions need to happen with some kind of medium for them to interact uh-huh. with each other. So they put the acid in the base. It's baking soda with an acidic powder. I think it's like cream of tartar or something together in there. And then when you put it in and add your liquid, it starts reacting. That is incredible. I wish you guys could see my face right now. <laughs> His face is like as if he's being washed over with knowledge. Yeah. Just amazed. It's like someone just like ladling knowledge on top of my brain and it's starting to soak in. Or someone turned on the light and he saw a room for the first time. Yeah. Like, oh, this is what the world looks there like. There rooms now? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I said turn on the light and saw a room. <laughs> like, you could have like walked outside for the first time and seen grass. <laughs> yeah. 
That's true. It's like, whoa, <laughs> Your structures. Faces, yes. Wow. But seriously, I didn't know. that is genius. The idea I know. that like, <laughs> like, well, at first I was thinking like, wow, okay, that's kind of cool because baking soda, I guess if you happen to ha- be making a cake that's already acidic, mm-hmm. I guess that'd be helpful. Mm-hmm. But I was kind of thinking like, well, I guess there's a lot of reasons that that won't apply or like a lot of right. recipes where I'm not going to be able to use the fluffy, yes. like, you know, tool, uh-huh. um, niceness of baking soda. But then just as I was kind of, that was sinking in, you're like, but wait, <laughs> there's more, <laughs> there's more <laughs> because that's genius. Yeah. There's so people are so smart. I don't know who came up with baking powder, but mm-hmm. like, that's amazing that someone thought to do that. Yeah. That really is amazing. So cool. So I will say this. Okay. Um, so I was doing this and I like to just do a little pre fact check to make sure I'm doing things right. This one I already knew is just in my brain from years. It's kind of hard to give credit. I don't think it's plagiarizing if you just have the knowledge from going through class, but. Mm -hmm. Or it's like, how could you cite every single thing that you've ever read or learned or. Right. And you wouldn't even know which really thing you're Mm -hmm. actually referencing. Yes, exactly. So it's like, that's not really worth it. But Uh I was looking at some recipe places that I like to sort of see which ones use baking powder and which ones use baking soda. Uh So I knew my lemon cake. I use a lemon cake from Love Life and Sugar. It's amazing. Uh Uh-huh. And that one uses, um, it uses baking soda plus mm-hmm. a little bit of baking powder because mm-hmm. there's not enough of the acidic lemon juice to mm-hmm. make the whole thing bubbly. Then I went to look at Nestle chocolate chip cookies mm-hmm. and they use baking soda, not baking powder, which I was really mm-hmm. surprised by. So I Googled what's acidic in chocolate chip cookies and Sally's Baking Addiction website told me that brown sugar is acidic. I didn't even know that. It's because of the molasses? I don't know. I didn't look any further, but I just got really interested. I thought I went to that chocolate chip cookie recipe, 100% sure it would use baking powder and it uses baking soda. And I thought, what? So I learned something new too and I was just excited and wanted to share. I can look into what makes brown sugar acidic, but I kind of ran. I was doing something else and didn't think to go further. But isn't that crazy? I didn't know. That is crazy. I would have thought the same thing just with my new, very noob knowledge. <laughs> yeah. I would have thought like, well, I've had many chocolate cookies of all baking things. It's an area I'm a lot more experienced in. Mm-hmm. And I would have totally, totally thought it'd be powder, not soda. Weird. You seemed so happy. Yeah. <laughs> you I, like seem so happy to have learned this. Well, I think I, I started getting a little bit like not as hopeful that I was going to have an aha. Uh-huh. Cause I was like, uh, oh my gosh, I just got to get through this and like rem- remember this stuff i'm struggling <laughs> and then it started making sense and then i got it and then you blew my mind and then so now i'm like excited because it was a point where i was like not feeling confident about my learning abilities right. i was like oh gosh yeah and that's probably a little bit on me too because i thought oh explaining acids and bases is going to be so easy but it's always interesting to me it's just a fun challenge for me to have mm. to learn a new way to explain something because I'm so deep in it. I yeah. think I can do a pretty good job of pulling myself out and yeah. trying to see it from a non-chemist perspective, but I am so in it. There are some things that I think are just basic knowledge that are yeah. not. And well, it's like, And crazy. that would be basic knowledge for any chemist. It's like, right. That was like years ago for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, 14 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Since yeah. I was in high school. Yeah. Whereas like... Maybe that was something that was explained to me when I was in high school, but then it hasn't been since then. I've never right. had to think about it. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, it's a very basic building block uh-huh. for you. Whereas like, it was a basic building block for many of us, probably at some point yeah. in school or whatever, but it wasn't basic building block enough for life that it just got forgotten or left or never That's really understood fun. in the first place. Yeah, it was fun. That was a fun one. It was a fun, interesting challenge. Okay. Well, now, just because it was a little confusing at the beginning, mm-hmm. I want you to go all the way back to the beginning, do a quick, quick explanation. It doesn't really have to be quick, but do a quick overview okay. and um, tell me everything that you learned as if I'm someone that didn't already know it. And you guys, Jam made me this cold brew coffee. No, it's not cold brew. Jam made me this iced coffee. He, he made one for me and one for his wife, Emily, and it is so tasty he's very good at coffee i am really enjoying this so i'm looking forward to being able to here's can you hear the <laughs> yeah I'm it's coming through looking forward to being able to drink this delightful drink while i learn okay so from the very beginning from the very beginning acids and bases are different mm-hmm. um that's true, <laughs> that's true. okay One for one. Um, Bases take away 
the in this scenario take away the hydrogen i i should clarify that there are different definitions of acid and base Mm -hmm. this is one this is the general one that most people think of when they think of acids and bases Mm -hmm. there are other definitions that different types of chemists do use it doesn't matter a lot i just didn't want you to think i wanted you to have the whole picture okay so it's not it's not a big deal that you have to say in this scenario this is the most common type okay or definition of acid yeah um bases a base takes away the hydrogen and um but leaves the electron the mm-hmm. one electron the hydrogen has yeah that's really important um and so then it has it takes this positive hydrogen mm-hmm. and leaves that electron so then yep. the ele- the the acid has these electrons that are extra or something like that mm-hmm. yeah now the acid has become a, a basic mm-hmm. and then the base has taking on these positive yes hydrogens usually to make it neutral um so in the case of like vinegar and baking soda it when that happens the baking soda Mm -hmm. is taking on those hydrogens Mm -hmm. and it changes um it in that reaction Mm that's going on it see the things are reconfigured the elements Mm -hmm. reconfigured and stuff like that yeah which creates co2 which is bubbles which causes that like expansive explosiveness yeah and water Mm -hmm. so then the original makeup, which is one carbon, mm-hmm. one hydrogen, mm-hmm. and three oxygens, mm-hmm. becomes carbon with two oxygens, better known as carbon dioxide. Yep. And two hydrogens and an oxygen, mm-hmm. which is H2O, which is water. Right. Um, so that's happening in that volcano scenario. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to baking, mm-hmm. st- st- take the baking soda still from the volcano. Yes. Put that into something that's already acidic, like the lemon cake. Mm-hmm. It does the same thing, where it it reacts, creates carbon dioxide and water. Mm-hmm. So the baking soda itself stops kind of existing as we know it. Yep. So it doesn't leave a flavor, and because of the it's having slower, um, not as fast as and explosive as the volcano. <laughs> it creates tasty chocolate cake volcano. Yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, it creates because of the. Air bubbles, or not mm-hmm. air bubbles, but the uh, um, carbon dioxide bubbles, right? Um, are make the cake fluffier. But that happens slowly while the thing's cooking, mm-hmm. and so it's like just slow that way down and make it way less violent, mm-hmm. and it creates a fluffiness rather than like a foamy liquidiness. Mm-hmm. But then things got crazier because people figured <laughs> out how to make baking powder, mm-hmm. which is like. Don't worry about whether you're trying to make a cake that already has acidity in it, like a lemon cake or whatever. Right. This thing is already the full package. Yeah. It's got acid and base. Mm-hmm. And you just put it in there. And because it's going to get wet and mm-hmm. whatever else and dissolve into something, while you're baking it, it's going to have the same reaction without already having to be acidic. Yes. And it's going to make your baked good or whatever fluffy. Your cakes and bakes fluffy. Is that right? That is correct. Oh, man. <laughs> that Man, what a test. This is a good one. This is a shout out to... I should have done... I should have said this at the beginning, but uh-huh. I didn't. Um, part of what inspired this is the new season of Great British Bake Off has come out. Uh-huh. And normally we in America have to wait six or eight months uh-huh. to get it. And maybe it's not that long, but that's mm-hmm. how it feels. And now they're... Netflix is releasing it by episode every week, so we only have to wait like three days. Interesting. So this is a shout out to the Great British Bake Off and um, Cakes and Bakes. It's it's all very exciting. Whoa. And I am a baker, so I can put some pictures of my cake online for you people should. to You should. I've at. had some of these cakes without knowing any of the chemistry behind them. I've had some of them, and... With no real credentials or knowledge, I can attest that they are delicious. <laughs> Yay. I'm so glad you think so. Also, I want to give you the UK a shout out because we have like 75 downloads there. Yeah. They're like making up a 
a sizable percentage. They are. And Canada, my people in Canada uh-huh. are killing it. We have, I think, 100 downloads in Canada. They're the first country. If they haven't already, they will be the first country to reach triple digits. Second country? Oh, besides us. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't counting the yeah. states. I meant the first country right, right, right. outside of us. Because we are, yeah, yeah. Right. First country outside of us. Yes. Dude, Canada. I don't count us as a country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we used to be, but, you know, not so much anymore. Uh, Canada, hit us up, dude. Yeah, Canada, I love you. I just look up pictures of places in Canada to be happy. Yeah. So, Canada, and you've got my favorite sport. I just have so much to thank you for. Thanks, Canada. Thanks, Canada. And thanks, all of you guys, for listening and for learning about chemistry this week. Melissa and I have a lot of ideas of topics of chemistry in everyday life, but we do want to hear from you um, about thoughts, ideas, or questions you might have from your everyday life that you want to know the chemistry behind. So hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Gmail at Chem for Your Life. That's Chem F O R Your Life to share your thoughts and ideas. And if you enjoyed the podcast, you can subscribe on any podcast app, your favorite one, your least favorite one, whatever. And if you really <laughs> like it, yeah, if you really like it, you can write us a review on Apple Podcasts. That'll help us to share this podcast with even more people. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. Jam Robinson is our producer, and we'd like to give a special thanks to A. Kiwasong and V. Garza, who reviewed this episode.